So I'm, I'm going to start. So I'm going to talk about uh, making Debian compiler agnostic. And basically, I'm going to present first the study of a rebuild of the whole archive using a, a new compiler called Clang or Clang. I will use both terms, basically the same thing. Uh, so in Debian currently, we have one compiler, which is called GCC, that pretty much everyone used at least once. So we are using it to build C, C++, Objective-C, Fortran, and a few other languages like ADA. Uh, it is supported in ev on every Debian architecture and on every Debian kernel. In Debian, we have the Linux kernel, the, uh, the K3BSA kernel, and the GNU kernel. So uh, for now, it has been the reference in the compiler world for the last 20 years. Every Linux distribution is using it. Uh, it is used to build application on huge clusters, but also for cell phones and so on. So it is really something that everybody is using now, and many people are contributing to it. And first, I'd like to say also that I'm a strong GCC user. I'm using GCC every day at my work. And uh, I like to make a disclaimer that uh, I won't be talking about the license of LLVM and Clang. So if you want to troll, no worries, but at the end, <laughs> about this subject. Uh, so why do we want a new compiler in Debian? So the first reason that it is because we can. It is something fun with Debian. It is that every uh, Debian developer can do it. Basically, I don't have anybody in Debian who will send me an email telling me, uh, telling me you, uh, that I have to stop working on this. So I can really do what I want in Debian. And for that, it is fun because it is a huge playground. We have so many packages in the archive, so many technologies, so many very skilled people that it is a great place to work on. And if I started this work, it's basically because I think it's fun. I think the future of Clang is, uh, is bright, and many people are coming to use it more and more. So uh, I do it, I'm doing that currently because I like it, and I found that very interesting on the technical point of view. But more seriously, uh, I want to uh, push Clang into Debian because uh, the more you are using different compilers, the better it is. So you will find more error, more programming error. I will show you many examples where Clang beats GCC on error detection and warnings. So I'm experimenting that on my daily work. I'm working on a free software uh, about numerical computation called Scilab. Uh, we are building the software every day with four compilers. So the one from Microsoft, the one from Intel, uh, GCC and Clang. And we realized that using th these four compilers, we strongly improve the quality of the software. So in Debian, I would like to push this idea more uh, to improve the quality of the upstream packages. So that means that every uh, Debian packages will be built with GCC and with Clang. So it really improves the quality of the source code and therefore the quality of the binary. Uh, it has some advantages that ARM is currently uh, contributing a lot on the LLVM stack. Uh, some people say that it is slower, some people say that it is uh, faster on the ARM. Then the binary produced by GCC is slower than the one produced by Clang. I won't go into this uh, discussion because I have no clue, I haven't tried. And I'm, but some people say that it is going to be, uh, the binary currently oops, are faster now using clangs and GCC. So next, my, uh, what I'd like to do also is in Debian, we have been able to uh, decoupling the Linux kernel from the, lin from the distribution itself. That means that you can use Debian with two other kernels, but you, you are not able to use uh, Debian produced by another compiler than GCC. So uh, I'd like to push more a way to uh, remove the specificity of GCC from Debian and allow the usage of another compiler. So that means that you will be able to use Clang to compile the, to compile the archive, but at some point you should be able also to do it with Intel compilers if you want, or Pascal uh, compiler. So now I'm going to present the LLVM stack and Clang. Uh, it started at as a research project by one uh, PhD student, his name is Chris Lassner. He, he wanted to uh, create uh, a platform to do his research. Uh, he used to be a GCC uh, developer, 
And originally, he wanted LLVM to be the base of the next generation of GCC. However, uh, that didn't work because you have to manage the complexity of the software and the legacy, and people didn't want to change and do such uh, major changes. Uh, it is more and more used in the research industry, uh, in the research field. I've got some uh, PhD friends or postdoc friends who are doing their research on LLVM. Uh, the main reason is that it is way easier to go into the C++ code of the LLVM stack than the GCC one, which is pretty hard to understand currently on some part. Uh, so Chris Latner has been uh, contacted by uh, Apple at the end of his PhD to um, continue his work on that. The idea of Apple is pretty clear and they never lied about that, that they don't like the GPL license and they want a BASD compiler. Uh, so they, they have been producing GCC binary plus patches for a long time. They stopped that one or two years ago. And I think pretty much everybody is happy that they stopped because they made a lot of uh, mistakes in the GCC packaging and so on. So they, they really invested on the compiler on the LLVM stack for a very long time. And now they have been able to build a very strong community on the software. So I did this uh, this statistic uh, a couple of months ago. So it basically showed uh, during the last uh, 3,000 uh, commits in LLVM and Clang uh, who has been contributing. So basically I did a SVN log, I look at the author, I look if it was working for Apple, Google and whatever, uh, and I produce this, uh, this schema. So you can see that Apple is doing a, a bit less than half of the code currently. Google is doing a strong part and uh, you can see many other uh, people like Intel, MIPS, Mozilla. There are many academics and uh, individuals like myself who are contributing to this software. So what, what about Clang? So basically Clang is a, is a parser and uh, an analyzer for C, C++ and Objective-C. Uh, currently there is no interest for Apple or Google to develop a Fortran compiler but there are some people currently saying that they are working on that. Uh, for now, uh, I have no clue if it is a proof of concept and or if they really want to make a final version of a Fortran compiler, but it might, I, it might happen someday. And it is currently the default compiler for Apple platforms and the free BSD project. Uh, you have the sources of the information at the bottom of the slide. Uh, so Clang has some advantages over GCC and some other compiler. Uh, since the work started in the 2000 uh, years, the base code is more cleaner. That means that the architecture is, uh, is 2000 compliant and not 80s, are not from the 80s, so it is easier to get into the code to understand what things are doing and how it works. Uh, it has a very strong interest for many uh, industrial ma uh, hardware manufacturers. Uh, I haven't added at the list, but Sony and Samsung are also contributing to the source code. Uh, it is supposed to be to build faster than GCC uh, on the software I'm working on. It, that it is true. I'm not sure it is true with every project, but most of the time it is. And uh, one good advantage is that it accepts all GCC arguments. And if it is not the case, you can report a bug on the, LL on the LLVM bug tracker and they will implement the flag to make sure that it behaves the same way as GCC. So that means that if you are using uh, GCC to compile for your project, instead of uh, using CC equal GCC, you can replace CC equal Clang, and it should work out of the box if your source code is fine. But most of the time, it works without any issue on the argument. So some basic numbers. So uh, using Clang instead of GCC, I gain two minutes on the Scylla build. It is not that much, but when you are doing that on uh, 10 machines every day uh, on uh, full-time work, it is really worth it. So I'm going to show some uh, advantages on the detection of the code. So uh, if you don't know how to write C code, it's too bad for you because it will the next 10 minutes will be about C code. So this one, it is one of the advantages of, uh, of Clang, since uh, they have a high, re uh, high representation, which is pretty clean. They have been able to do this kind of detection. So here, uh, the compiler is able to detect that uh, it will be on, uh, always uh, true. 
uh, always false sorry, on this one because the, the i variable is unsigned. So that means that it will be always uh, equal to zero or positive. And uh, if you look with GCC, I tried with the uh, latest release into Debian, which is a 4.7, the latest table. Uh, GCC is not able to detect anything here. And uh, Clang here is able to detect that and generate an error automatically. So, uh, okay, uh, the, the side effect of uh, Clang being more and more uh, used and uh, more and more uh, able to uh, fix and to find mistakes in the source code is that it brings some uh, competition in, in the free and open source world. So here is a new URL from the GCC website. Uh, basically, GCC people realize that CLANG is going to be more and more important, so they started to work on improving the diagnostic and the detection of error. So uh, many things I, have been improved in the uh, error detection and in the error message in the latest releases of GCC. And the GCC people, when they, the Clang people, when they noticed this page, decided to do the same here and uh, explain why Clang is better than GCC. So it is bringing some competition in the free open source world and many people are interested in both, both projects. So it is a very friendly uh, competition here. So about the rebuild of the Debian using CLANG. So I, uh, I did this crappy method, basically. Since uh, Clang is supposed to behave exactly the same way as GCC, you can basically uh, remove the GCC compilers and uh, replace it by Clang. So it is what we did on every uh, virtual machine that we use to rebuild the archive. So we tested that on, uh, on AMD64. We haven't tried on the other architecture, and I'm sure that uh, LLVM does not support every architecture that we've got in the Debian archive. But for now, uh, it is working pretty well on Intel and ARM processors. And I haven't tested uh, the performances. So that means that I haven't tested if uh, the build is going faster or if the binary generated are faster neither the quality of the binary. That means that maybe it is producing some bad binary codes, but I don't know that. I, I didn't launch a unitary testing suite. But I, I'm not afraid about that. I don't think there will be too many uh, build issues in terms of binary creations. So the, uh, all the results have been published during the last year on this website, so silong.debian.net. I'd like to thank also Luca and Amazon for giving us the opportunity to use the Amazon infrastructure. So basically, Amazon is, is offering a few uh, thousand US dollars per year to do such kind of experiment, like rebuilding the whole Debian archive. So the first one that we did was Clang uh, 3.0. So we had almost 9% of pa packaging failing. Uh, the, the second one was the 3.1 that we did last June, just before the Debian conference in Nicaragua. So we had 12% uh, packages uh, failing, and I'm going to explain why we had this increase. And uh, I published the, the result about two hours ago, about the 3.2, and we have exactly the same percentage. The number of packaging failing uh, increased, but in the meantime, we increased the number of packages into the archive, which is normal. So I'm going to explain this kind of why we have this difference between the 3.0 and the 3.1. Uh, but first, I'd like to uh, comment on this aspect. For people who are not very familiar with compilation of C code, uh, there are, these are two uh, flags which are very uh, often used in building packages. So the first one is dash w all. That means that it's enable all warning for C and C++ code. And the second one should not be used uh, to software production, but, but only during development. Uh, so the dash W error, that means that every warning uh, found during the build process will be uh, treated as an error. So basically, that means that if you have uh, a warning, which is in this case uh, the same uh, example that I showed before, uh, the build will fail instead of displaying a warning. So it has a side effect, that means that if the compiler is uh, adding some new check into dash w all, it will fail your, uh, your build. And Clang is adding way more uh, checks than GCC when you are using dash w all. 
so that makes way more errors. I will enter into the detail later on that subject. So uh, with this argument, with dash w error, uh, and the default behavior of Clang, uh, the compiler is able to detect when uh, an argument that you used uh, during the command line has not been used, which, is, which can be a nice feature when you, are, when you really want to use a specific flag for your software. Uh, on my side, I don't care. I'm going to, usually when I'm calling GCC, I'm going uh, to give uh, him uh, tons of uh, include paths, and I don't care if they are not very interesting, but some people might be interesting by such behaviors and such feature. Uh, Clang has introduced since the version 3.1 some uh, security check. So uh, obviously the, the hero is here is quite obvious and Clang is able to detect this error and, uh, and fail the build. Uh, we have nine packages in the archive currently failing because of that. It is usually a secure, a, an important security issue. One of my favorite is this one. It is unsupported option. So we have packages in the Debian archive, which instead of using uh, dash o3 or dash o2, they are using dash o9. We even have one package which is uh, using dash o20, because maybe the developer thinks that if you use uh, a 20 times, if you use a 20, you will get 20 more optimization or something like that. We have six, uh, 50 packages in the Debian archive, which has this flag. This one also is very nice, and uh, we should have all packages fixed here because it is a very important source of potential bu bugs. So that basically you have a function which is uh, supposed to return something, and at some point in the source code, we have a return which returns nothing. So that means that if you are using my function foo here, you will have garbage at the end. So uh, you will have your program uh, going nowhere or failing. And we have 133 occurrences of this bug into the rebuild as the archive. Well, I guess it is some uh, very specific corner cases in the source code, but uh, it is worth uh, having a look too. So this one is quite similar. It is uh, when you want to return a value of a function and the function is expecting void, that means nothing. So GCC uh, will uh, accept this source code, even if it triggers a warning, but uh, Clang refuses this kind of declaration. I leave you decide what should be the behavior of GCC here, but I think the one of Clang is pretty clever. But it is crappy code, so you should not allow this kind of code in your C. Uh, so there is also another interesting bug. So here I added to the two references. So basically I reported the first bug on LLVM saying this code uh, doesn't work with Clang but works with GCC. They told me uh, it's not a bug, it's a fixture. And uh, I've been on the GCC bug tracker. I submitted this bug saying you accept this code while you should not. And they say it's not a bug, it's a feature. So basically, it is a different understanding of, the, of this keyword here. The friend class uh, for Clang is behaving differently than the one GCC when used with a static keyword. I leave you, if you want to have more details here, you have a look to, please have a look through the URL. Uh, so the Clang compiler, is, as I said previously, is giving way more uh, warnings than uh, GCC by default when you use dash w all. So with this piece of code, GCC, even with using the dash w all, won't display any warnings, while Clang here uh, says that you should remove the parentheses on the, on the if condition. So basically, that improves the quality of the code. Uh, Clang also does not support some GCC specific extensions. So here it is C++ code, and uh, we are defining here uh, a vector of int, and the size here is variable. And uh, according to the specification, this should not compile. But GCC accepts this kind of declaration. It is an extension, and on purpose, Clang is not managing this kind of declaration. Uh, here it is some code which are, it is a GC, GCC bug. It is a piece of code which should not be uh, accepted by GCC and which Clang refuses. 
So basically, it is because, if I remember correctly, it is because we are using the uh, B function here while it is defined here. So it, we should either we should define the profile of the function upper to be used. So uh, here it is uh, bugged in the C++ parser, which allows this kind of features. But uh, they agree it is a bug, and they hope they will find some it at some point. So we still have 34 occurrences of this kind of issues in the Debian archive. It is not a big deal, since it works, and the behavior, if you do code properly, won't change anything. So it's not a big issue, but it is G++ is failing to support the C++ standard. So my, my point of view here is that uh, through the two last we build, we have been able to prove that Clang is now uh, a viable alternative to uh, build C, C and C++ code into the Debian archive. I'm not saying that we should replace GCC by Clang here, but I'm saying that uh, it shows that it is able to uh, compile most of the code. It supports uh, most of the code which has been developed and used into the Debian infrastructure. Uh, and most of the problems which are remaining are upstream. That means that uh, most of the bugs uh, which are uh, detected by Clang are upstream's bugs. So upstream should fix them at some point to, uh, to be compiled with Clang. And most of the time it's very interesting to fix those bugs because it improves the quality of the software. So I'm going to present quickly what we've done during the Google Summer of Code of this year. So uh, we had one update. So what I showed you before is basically a, a one-time rebuild of the whole archive uh, during six or seven hours at once. So what, uh, what we wanted to do is to uh, make it uh, more permanent. So that means that every new package uploaded into the Debian archive will automatically be built using Clang. The goal at the end is to provide a way to switch easily from one compiler to the other to build your packages into the archive. So we had one student, Alexander, and the mentors were Paul and me. Uh, unfortunately, the student, uh, right after the last payment, stopped working on that, but uh, it's part of the Google Summer of Code. We very common. Uh, so the first output uh, for non Damian people is not very interesting, but uh, the infrastructure to rebuild packages is quite a pain to set up, and there were no documentation, so the student work, lucky him, for the first few weeks on the writing documentation on how to install this kind of pieces of software. So it took a while because it's not very well documented and there are very different versions of the software. Uh, so we set up a parallel infrastructure to uh, build uh, the Debian packages. So that means that it is not an official Debian services. It's something parallel that we are using on uh, various computers. Uh, so we have the WannaBuild server, which will launch some, so we, which will um, provide new build to be done by the BuildD services. And instead of uh, using GCC, we are using CLang here. So we uh, we had to hack some uh, Debian tools. So first we hack uh, DPKG to uh, export some variables. So instead of hard coding the version of the compiler. We propose to uh, use USR bin CC, USR bin C++, and USR bin OBGC. Uh, they are already set up in Debian. They are already uh, uh, handled by AutoTools and CMake. So we, p we are proposing to use this one instead of our coding the direct uh, usage of GCC or G++. We, we, also we are also doing some uh, check. So Debian rules, for those who don't know what it is, is basically you define how the package is going to be built. So giving the, the argument uh, how to launch the compilation and so on. So we are checking that uh, there is no hard-coded declaration to override the, the compiler. And finally, we are uh, setting the, the USR bin aliases to uh, the compiler itself. So that means here, we are setting them to Clang, but we could set them to GCC and G++ if we want. Uh, we, in every uh, BuildD instance, we are also adding a hook to install uh, the, uh, the C-Lang dependencies, and we are also 
uh, removing the GCC, G++, and C++ binaries. We are removing them and replacing them by a script which will basically uh, uh, fail the build saying you are using uh, an hard-coded declaration of the, of the compiler. You should not do that. You should use uh, USR bin CC or use the variable CC instead of them. So the results uh, are published on buildday-silang.debian.net. It's currently done because the machine is moving from one data center to the other. Uh, hopefully it will be up uh, next tomorrow or the day after. Uh, we are publishing the, the results this way. So for example, it is the packages that I'm maintaining. So uh, we can see that our pack here, the build went fine, which is normal because it is only for twin code, so I'm using JFortran. But for example, for Dragon Egg, uh, work compiling with Silang worked. As you can see here, it built correctly. But for Code Saturn or for Silang itself, it failed. Because for example, for Silang, I'm, I am hard coding GCC. I know that's bad, but I will fix that. But I am hard coding the, the usage of GCC in this package. So what are the next steps? So we, we are proposing with Paul and a few other people to update the Debian policy to uh, to recommend not hard coding the declaration to the compiler. So we would like to push that after the, the, the next release. Maybe for uh, Jesse to say, okay, you are not supposed to hard code the, the declaration of the compiler. You should leave to the Debian developer a way to uh, make sure that he uses a new compiler instead of uh, GCC here. So we already sent the proposal on the mailing list a few months ago. We haven't pushed that because of a lack of time, but we will uh, get back on this uh, the next few months. We are also planning to add a, a Lincoln warning uh, to detect that uh, the hard code there is some hard-coded declaration in the build process. And uh, we would like also to uh, make all this information uh, as much as possible available to the Debian developer, but also upstream developer. So uh, the idea is that if you have a package which is uh, into Debian, you will have automatically the feedback of your software being rebuilt by Clang instead of GCC. So you will have the logs and so on. And at some point, which we'll probably do uh, in one or two years, it's uh, being able to create a parallel repository of a package built with Clang instead of GCC. For, for now, since the performance are pretty much the same, I don't see the point, but uh, if and when Clang is faster than GCC, it will be worth it. And in the future, there are also some uh, other parallel things that uh, we would like to push. Uh, Clang has a plugin, which is called Poly, which is uh, a research project from INRIA and ENS, but part of the official LVM stack, which makes polyhedral uh, optimization, like uh, Graphite in GCC. There is also a, a program called ASAN, Address Sanitizer and Memory Sanitizer, uh, which are basically uh, static files included into your binary, which are going to keep track of uh, address allocation error, memory leaks, and uh, threading issue like uh, deadlock and stuff like that. Uh, it is one of my favorite components of the LLVM stack. It's called ScanBuild. If you are doing C and C++ and you don't know that, I advise you to check out that tomorrow. It is really helping to find uh, some common error in programmation but uh, on a very high level. That means that it can uh, give you a very nice feedback like this one about memory leaks, uh, difference, difference of pointer and stuff like that. And it is really doing some high level static analysis on your, comp on your code. And it helps a lot to fix bugs and uh, memory leaks. And at some point, if people are interested, uh, this will allow to uh, rebuild the archive with Intel compiler. I won't do that, but I know that some people are interested in that, especially, especially in the HPC world, since, since Intel's compiler are still way better than GCC and Clang in terms of performances. So another project that we worked on is uh, with Andrej, who also quit at the end. Uh, it was a packaging of an alternative uh, C++ runtime library. So uh, in parallel of LLVM and uh, Clang, the LLVM community is working on two C++ implementations. One is a standard 
uh, library and the other one is a low level uh, runtime support. So, th uh, so this simple C++ code, if we compile it by default by Clang, it will be linked again libstd C++. And if we are doing the same with this argument, it's still lib, lib C++, it is going to be linked against a new runtime C++ library. So the ID here, and I won't hide it, is Apple do, uh, still hates GPL, so they want a C++ runtime library which is under a BSD license. So it's the purpose of this. Uh, it's always good to have uh, various options. So uh, we have that in Debian now, so if you want to give it a try, it is a new C++ runtime library. Uh, for now, I, I don't think there is a lot of performance improvement compared to the standard library, but at some point it might be interesting to have a look on this. It was more a proof of concept that we did here. So we upload that in July. Uh, there is still no official stable release from the LLVM community on this. And uh, we are also working on the packaging of compiler RT. It's basically, I learned that not a long time ago, that there is also a C runtime library into Debian, and it is providing a replacement for that. Uh, the polydual uh, optimization will be available in Debian in the next few weeks. The package is ready. I'm just waiting for new to, uh, f I'm just uh, waiting for the FTP master to approve it. And uh, LLDB, which is uh, aiming to be uh, a G GDB replacement, but better. Uh, one of the advantages of uh, LLDB is that you can uh, evaluate uh, complex C++ uh, code uh, into the debugger, while GDB is not able to do. So uh, I'm I finished to present my work on the rebuild, so don't hesitate if you have any question or if you want to say bad thing about Apple or other big players. Yeah. Uh, and, um, in fact, we are proposing the two solutions. We are proposing uh, first to respect the CC equals something, and then if there is nothing provided using uh, USR bin CC, because they are not always uh, provided this kind of variable. Did I answer to your question? We? Oui? No, I haven't. Uh, I don't think anybody did. As far as I know, nobody did. But I know that some people told me that they, they would like to do it. Okay, we we can discuss after that uh, because we we could use the Amazon infrastructure to do this kind of rebuild. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. So thank you.